Glass Bobbles, and I'm super excited to bring you another interesting video. This video, I'll be taking you down the rabbit hole on one of my exciting adventures in the wild. This story is about a jewelry that I spotted, and I went and did my research, and I found out that my $12.99 purchase actually is a very special piece that commands over a thousand dollars. So if you're interested in hearing about this story and learning about my adventures, then you stay with me. Without further delay, let's just get this video started. Hi everyone. I just love going out into the wild and finding really unique pieces. And because I've been looking at jewelry for over 30 years and studying it, I have a keen eye for spotting really interesting pieces that maybe some other people might pass them by. You have to develop that eye to spot the unique things. Uh, the ones that you know are fabricated with really good quality gemstones or the design of the piece is very unique or identify certain styles from certain uh, designers. There's a whole bunch of ways that your eyes can get trained to look for that special piece. And even though I might not necessarily know exactly what these pieces are, I know that they're special. And so I look at those pieces and if they're a good price, I bring them home and I do my research. I either go into my books, go on the internet, and sometimes I ask some friends. And so that's what I did with this amazing piece. This piece right here. These were earrings that I spotted. I knew there was something different about them. They looked like they were artisan made. The material used, I believed it looked like maybe uh, mixed metals. It had sterling, it had a copper, it had 18 karat gold. And I knew that there was something really, really special about them. And when I looked at the back of the earrings, there was definitely a signature that I really could not see well, but it was definitely there. So I knew right away that with the materials that were being used and the signature in the back, that it was an artisan made piece. I also noticed that the posts had what looked like 18 karat I'm nearsighted. So I can see things better without my glasses. Um, and then I know that when I get home, I can look at them with my magnifying uh, loop. Um, or you can bring your loop with you even better. I knew that it had like some kind of carrot on the post. So with that, I knew these were a really, really special piece. I also noticed that it had what looked like to my eyes, a Japanese motif. And so um, probably because of the chopsticks and the way that the, the barrel is made, the pot is made, um, it looks like it's hung on what looks like an organic branch. Um, and I just knew that there was something special about them. But I couldn't figure out what the signature was. So I went on my Facebook identification group. And the Facebook groups are a really great way to get help with some of your pieces. Sometimes they give you the pricing, although some sites do not like to uh, advertise prices. Uh, some sites allow you to buy and sell and some places don't. So you really have to read what the rules are for each group that you were in. But in this particular group, I put pictures of this piece and I asked anyone if they knew who the designer was. And to my delight and surprise, someone reached out to me and told me that these were made by a designer by the name of Carolyn Morris Bach. And when I looked her up, I saw many beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous pieces that looked exactly like my piece on her website. And I knew that they had a great potential to be hers. So guess what I did? I reached out to Carolyn Morris Box on her email that was listed on her website and she wrote me back right away. Now, some of you might remember that I did this with another piece of jewelry that I found. It was the beautiful amethyst turtle brooch and I'll show you a picture right here. This brooch was super exciting to me 
because it was by a designer called Iraj Mayoni, and he's here in New York. And I reached out to him, and he also authenticated his piece. Check out that video. It was a $24.99 gorgeous, gorgeous turtle brooch that's worth over $2,000. So I was delighted that Miss Carol Morris Bach wrote me back and she indeed authenticated these earrings for me. I wanted to read to you Carolyn Morris Bach's correspondence in regards to these earrings. And this is what she had to say. Hello, Jackie. Yes, those are mine for the late 1980s. There should be a date along with the signature. Before my figurative work became so popular, I did basket pod forms, very Japanese in character. Once the figures and faces took off, it was nearly impossible to sell the pod forms, which are very frustrating because they were my preferred designs. Oh well, they are 18 karat gold, copper, and fine, pure silver, and could use a good cleaning. I use an old toothbrush and fine pumice, which can be found at your local hardware store, and of course, Amazon. I hope that is helpful. I'll check out your Bronx baubles. I think I refer to the series as my basket earrings. Wish it was something more exotic. I want to share with you a little bit more about Miss Carolyn Morris Bach because she was so generous with her time. The same as, as what Wendy Gell did for me and what um, I, Iraj Moani did as well. Um, I run a small little YouTube video and it's so nice that these amazing artists really want to share their pieces with you. They want to share their designs, their artistry, their knowledge, and they really, really appreciate people who are genuinely appreciate their stuff. So don't be shy. Carolyn Morris Box graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design, which is a very prestigious school. And she remains living in Southern Rhode Island with her husband and her dog in this amazing, cute, adorable home that's in the woods. And that's where she gets most of her inspiration for some of the pieces that uh, she creates. She creates one of a kind, very, very special, hand forged, handmade pieces. And no two pieces are alike. Each one is a one of a kind piece. And her inspiration is the forest. And she creates a lot of organic, beautiful designs. She uses amazing materials, such as silver, gold. She uses bone, uh, cow bone, bovine. She uses acorns. She uses pebbles and stones. She uses gemstones. She uses a lot of different types of materials. And she works all day, like eight to 10 hours a day on these tiny little minuscule pieces. And you can imagine how challenging that would be working on these little pieces, these miniature sized pieces. Her designs are very mystical and magical and fairy-like. She uses things that kind of look like talismans because they come from indigenous peoples. She uses pieces that are inspired by Eskimos and Native American Indians. And she also uses uh, designs that are inspired by the Egyptians and um, Africa, and also even Grecian. And so when you look at these ancient cultures and the way she applies them in, in her design, they almost have like this fairy tale quality to them. It kind of feels like you're in some sort of faraway place. She also even has Asian influences whether it's Japanese or Chinese. She takes her inspiration from natural elements and she uses the four seasons to her advantage. The moon, the stars, the sun, all these magical amuletic powers into her pieces and they're just kind of fairy-like. And in fact, some of her designs are made to look like spirit animals, like the Eskimos did with penguins and owls and bears and foxes. Just these beautiful little just creatures and that people just love, love to wear them because of the mystical, magical powers that she has in her design. She doesn't use any assistance 
to do her jewelry. She just, she, she works alone. And because of that, her jewelry takes quite a bit of time to produce. And so each piece is just beautifully made with a lot of tender love and care and time. And because of that, I think it appeals to people who really genuinely navigate to her work, like I started to. Her works are in incredible museums, such as the American Crafts Museum, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the National Endowments of Arts, and she has won so many awards for her pieces. And without realizing, I found some of her pieces are in the books that I've collected. Because of the massive appeal of her art jewelry, a lot of people try to emulate her pieces, but they can't seem to get it quite the way she does. The fine use of the material, the tiny, skinny little organic branches that, that, that are organic-like, and it's so finely done. And the materials that she uses, the top quality, pure silver, ivory, the semi-precious and even precious gemstones. Uh, people just can't get it the way she can do it. Um, and I think that's a testament for the many years that she put into her craft, that she creates and develops these unique pieces that are sought out after by the museums, by collectors, by very famous people. And so I wanna share with you this book, Read My Pens. In one of my first videos of two years ago, I did a, a really crude uh, video on this. I probably have to update it. And I am fascinated with this book because this book keeps coming up over and over and over again. Some of the um, projects that I'm working on. So here is an adorable bear by Carolyn Morris Bach that was collected by Madeline Albright and was featured in museums across the nation when it went on exhibit. And it was part of Madeline Albright's personal collection. I also recently purchased this book called Mastering Contemporary Jewelry Design by Loretta Lamb, Inspiration Process and Finding Your Voice. And I purchased this book a week ago and guess what I found? I found another pendant brooch in this book by Carolyn Morris Box. So with Carolyn Morris Box accolades of her pieces that are exhibited in the most coveted museums in the world by some really famous people and being featured in two amazing books and there might even be more books out there that she's in. I think that it's safe to say that Carolyn Moore's box work is just simply amazing and incredible. And can you believe that I found it in the wild for $12.99? A piece of jewelry history that's coveted by so many people. And even though it's one of her early works, I think that that actually adds a little cachet for me. That it was, if you look at her designs, you can see how she started out with these basket designs that she calls, um, and then develops into her woodland creatures. Um, I just think it's incredible. I'm super excited to have this in my collection. I'm so honored to have one of her pieces. I'm thrilled that uh, I have it. And I just wanna thank you guys for watching my videos. And I wanna leave with you a little montage of Carolyn Morris Bach. And maybe you can tell me which one of these woodland creatures is your favorite. And let me know if you happen to own one of her pieces.
that I've gone down two rabbit holes with you and finding these amazing pieces in the wild, doing the research on them and finding out that these pieces are worth incredible amounts of money. And you can do this too. I have a few more pieces I want to share with you from my collection, so I'll keep this series going. I also want to share with you some other projects that I'm working on. I recently took a course on Bedouin um, jewelry, and it was a fascinating course, and I'll share with you in a future video a little bit more details on that. I also joined a course with the Victoria and Albert Museum in regards to love and its meaning in jewelry. And it was an eight week course that I took online. Um, the moderator was all the way in London. And so it, um, I was here in New York and I was fascinated with that process. And I realized how much I really love learning more about history and jewelry. So I'm gonna continue my journey down the vintage custom jewelry road. And I'm gonna share more of that stuff with you. Um, the more I learn, the better I can find things in the wild and share them with everyone here. So if you are interested in learning more about my journey, stay tuned for some other future videos. And as I always say, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and forward me on to people who you think would be interested in joining the Vintage Costume Jewelry Tribe. I love sharing these stories with you, but most important, I love your comments, what you share with me. So I am so glad that I'm able to teach and learn with you and grow my practice and grow my knowledge. I love all of you so very much. I am so happy that my subscribership is getting better and I have all of you to thank for it. But with that, I'm going to let you go. Ciao!